-hmm. So my references totally I have seven. So is it acceptable or not? Uh, for what got seven? The references. References. Uh, no problem if you're more than three. Uh, minimum I require three references. Uh, more than yeah. that, no problem. As long as it's follow the APA format. Uh, all right. So uh, the second question is, uh, -huh. uh, uh can we give some? Uh, <clears throat> can we uh, ask you some questions in, on regards of the uh, answers that we gave in the assignments? Because uh -huh. I'm worried that I might be wrong or misunderstood the questions and such. Okay, so for all of you, uh, before, do you still remember what is the deadline I set for the assignment? 26? 26? Uh, I, I'm not sure. But bila ya, Madam bagi masa bila eh, sampai? 28. 28 of September, which is a weekend Tuesday. Okay, sebelum pukul 5 petang. Okay, maksudnya sebelum 28 of September, you can ask questions. Until you satisfy, until you call, uh, is confident that okay, I can get a full marks of 50%. Uh, then you submit. So after 28 of September, uh, no more consultation. So what the benefit for assignment is you can ask questions. Uh, but uh, Madam will not give you direct answer. I will guide you um, to get your correct answer. Uh, so that means you can ask questions, you can do consultation uh, until you're happy with your work. Is that okay? Uh, madam, mm -hmm. uh, later on, can I personal message you in Telegram where, can, no where I'm going to give you uh, my scanned assignment work? Okay, no problem. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, tapi minta maaf eh, kalau uh, weekend, uh, Madam didn't reply your message, then you have to... No, Madam, you haven't uh, answered my question yet. You have to remind Madam. Otherwise, Madam punya message memang banyak. Ada kumpulan-kumpulan grup-grup lain juga. Ada person, uh, PM, PM banyak. Mungkin Madam overlook ke um, when you're asking questions, then you have to remind me again lah. Okay, I'll try my best to answer your questions whenever I can. Uh, all right. So any other questions before we begin our class today? Uh, Juma, Madam, nak ingatkan kalau untuk assignment eh, please, please follow the format. Uh, format maksudnya sudah ada template kan, ikut sebijik macam tu. Satu muka surat dia minta, uh, let's say question number one, question number two. Then you, on that page only, question one, question two. Follow exactly in the template. Tak kisah salah awak nak edit dalam uh, laptop ke, awak nak print out. Print out is the best. Uh, because when you print out, it follow the format exactly. Okay, but for those who want to copy and answer manually, make sure you follow the template as well. Okay, jangan, uh, Madam, saya salin. So, saya salin ikut pattern saya. Tak boleh, eh. Kena ikut uh, standard template. Okay, that is standard, standardized for the whole, uh, for, for all students. For other practical, also the same thing. Okay, because we later, after Madam have marked your assignment, then we have to submit uh, to other lecturers to mark it again. Uh, so, bukan Madam seorang sahaja yang tanda, tapi ada pencara lain yang akan uh, tanda awak punya kerja juga. Okay. So make sure you uh, follow the format and only in one PDF file. Eh? So Madam tak nak ada yang dalam JPEG lah, ada yang dalam words lah, no what, the one. I only want one PDF file for every each of you only. Uh, so untuk Google Classroom, nanti platform uh, kat mana nak hantar kerja, Madam akan bagi tahu nanti. Okay. Right, so go back to our topic for today. Um, have you got your handout with you now? Yes, Madam. Yang lain pun sediakan sekali ya, sebab hari ini punya content agak pack sikit. So, we want to talk about and focus on ionization energy, which also helps in your assignment um, answering questions. Okay, so before that, let's look at our learning outcome. Don't forget to always go back to your learning outcome. Doesn't matter for assignment ke, for other chapters also. Okay, so for today's, uh, we are going to look at, still we are in 3.2. Um, we are going to look at 
um, for part G over here, define your first second ionization energy. Okay, and then H, we want to see the variations of this first ionization energy across the period and also down the group. And then after that, we want to explain why there is increase in successive ionization energy. So we are not only having one. Maybe you'll get first ionization energy, second, third, fourth, and so on. Uh, because you know the number of electrons is different for every um, element. Again, and then after that, the last one over here to deduce. Okay, whenever you see the word deduce, that means you identify the ionization energy and then you need to support with explanation. Uh, so deduce maksudnya dia lebih kurang macam satu short essay. So answer, supporting with explanation. Okay, and then we want to deduce electronic configuration and also the positions of this element inside your periodic table based on the data that um, is given in the questions. So that means it include interpretation, analyzing um, skill. Okay. So there is a recap, but I think the recap doesn't relate for today. Just to remind you for our last lesson on last Tuesday, um, we have already uh, encountered the train of atomic radii okay or the ionic radii so across a period down the group and also for the transitions element um, and also we compare the cation size with the parent and ion size of the parent okay and then afterwards we also done about isoelectronic species but remember isoelectronic species um, because it has the same number of electrons same electronic configurations therefore over here we are comparing the z and the z uh, so remember um, z means your nuclear charge proton number the z means your effective nuclear charge uh, so both of these factors will affect your size of isoelectronic species so for this two subtopic we have already um, discussed it during our last lesson on Tuesday. So you may look back on the video on YouTube. Okay, so for today, we want to focus on ionization energy. Uh, but ionization energy, have you encountered these terms before? Pernah tak belajar ni? Have you learned about uh, ionization energy before this? Chapter 2. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's kind of related, still the same definition, but now you're um you're doing something more than that. Okay. So from this ionization energy, how can I explain the train? Um, how can I uh, use this number to determine the position? Okay. So we go through again the definitions of the common ionization energy. So remember to check whether the question is asked for only ionization energy or there is some uh, position, first, second, third, and so on. So dia akan affect our linear definition. Uh, so kalau secara keseluruhan, eh, ionization means that it is the minimum energy required. Okay, when energy required, you know the value should be in positive. Okay, to completely remove one mole of electron. Bukan satu biji saja, tapi satu mole. Okay, when you have one more electron, that means 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 um, electron. Nah, tapi dekat sini, kita hanya mention satu mole sahaja. Okay, from one mole of gaseous atom or gaseous ion. So in general, if they only ask for ionization energy, then we would mention both of these. Gaseous ion atom as well as gases atom. And then you can jot down over here also. Lah, the value should be always in positive because energy required. But when you have the words first ionization energy using the abbreviation IE1, okay, that means you are removing the very first electron from a neutral atom. So over here in your explanation, in your definition, you only focusing on atom. Uh, so about first ionization energy, memang kita keluarkan elektron daripada parent atom yang tak ada charge. Okay, so if let's say over here we have an example of magnesium. Okay, can I know how many um, electrons or proton number for magnesium? Anyone remember? 12. 
Okay, 12 uh, proton number for magnesium. Um, which group is it from? Group 2. Group 2. How many valence electron? 2. 2 valence electron. Okay, so over here we can see first ionization energy. Kita keluarkan daripada uh, 12 electron. Total ada 12. So the very last one we remove it first. So let's say over here we have uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. So the first electron we remove from 3s. Okay. Second electron we still remove from 3s. So about the got 3s are the dual electron. Uh, so we proceed from the very outer shell. Uh, that is your first IE. Second IE also from 3s. Kalau third IE dari mana? Third ionization energy dia akan dari mana? Kalau ikut scenario macam ni. Scenario untuk magnesium. 2P. 2P. So it proceed like that. IE1, the very outest most. Okay, and then the second, you're moving inside a little bit and then inside a little bit and inside a little bit. Okay, so over here you can see magnesium, a very uh, neutral magnesium atom. Okay, when you remove one more of electron, you are producing Mg positive one. Uh, so this is one more of electron that you have removed. Right, so this uh, equation, uh, electron what is on the right, that means you remove the electron. So when it comes to second ionization energy, your IE2, so still the same, minimum energy required to completely remove one more of electron. But this time, um, you will remove from one mole of gaseous ion with a positive one charge. Okay, so positive one charge here also very important. So we're still using magnesium as example. Now, second ionization energy are removing the second electron from Ng positive one. Okay, so um, the second electron, after it remove, you will form Mg2+. plus. So this is the second electron that you remove. Okay, so please um, pay attention to the um, number of that ionization energy. So we will use it quite often. So if Madam gave you third ionization energy, um, so I will... Remove from one more of a gaseous ion of how many charge? If I want the ionization energy. Positive 2. Positive 2 and so on. So kalau third ionization energy, IE3, kita akan keluarkan daripada ion dengan charge positive 2. So ini untuk IE3. Ah, kalau IE4, daripada ion dengan positive 3 charge and so on. So, about ingat eh, first IE daripada neutral atom. Charge dia kosong. Ha, cuma kosong ni kita tak payah tulis sebab atom memang kita tahu dia adalah neutral. Okay. So, we proceed to the train of the ionization energy. So, in this one, across a period, this one is in general. Okay. Generally, um, what is the train? In general. So, it has something to do with the atomic size that we have done in the last lesson. Uh, so, untuk atomic size, across the period, what happened? Decrease. Okay, across the period, your first ionization energy decrease. Uh, sorry, your atomic size decrease. Okay, due to your proton number incre increasing, okay, your ZF effective increasing. Attractions also become stronger, therefore your size will become smaller. So, you need to understand of uh, this ionization energy, kita nak keluarkan elektron. So, maka dekat sini, kita tengok eh, dekat first two, uh, first um, explanations over here. Across a period, we know that atomic size will decrease Okay, because your proton number and also effective nuclear charge increases. So at this time, your attraction will become stronger. Okay, since the size becomes smaller, distance between nucleus and your outer electrons become shorter and shorter. Okay, distance decreases. So the attractions become stronger. So you need more, much more energy to overcome this strong attraction. Uh, so, lebih banyak energy kita perlukan. So, maksudnya, kalau awak punya size jadi makin kecil, 
Okay, ionization energy perlu lagi banyak. Uh, so over here you can see your size decreases. Okay, size between the atomic uh, radius decreases, but the inversely proportional towards the ionization energy. So over your notes, you can highlight over these two terms. So atomic size decreases, first ionization energy increases. So now we are talking about the general train. And then we focus on the first ionization energy. Okay, so across a period, atomic size decreases because proton number and the Z increases. Therefore, first ionization energy increases. So if you're looking at this diagram back again, getting smaller and smaller across the period, you need much more energy to remove the outer electron. Uh, so the IE1 will increase. So please make sure you understand about um, the general trends over here. Atomic size, if it's smaller, that means your IE is greater. Or vice versa, smaller size, uh, sorry, bigger size, Smaller ionization energy. So, but kalau dia jadi makin besar, okay, um, attraction is not that strong. Uh, attraction is become weaker. Therefore, less energy needed. Therefore, uh, lower IE. So, um, is there any questions uh, for the relationship between atomic size and the um, ionization energy? No. Uh, no, madam. So over here, across a period, if let's say we put an example. Okay, so let's say I want uh, from group one, okay, our lithium and also beryllium group two. So this one inside your nucleus, we have positive one, we have positive two. Okay, so over here, this diagram is to help you to, for those who don't quite understand, you can understand over here. So across a period, now we are focusing on the effective nuclear charge, the one in the nucleus. Uh, so when the attraction is getting stronger, the electron is pulling closer. Uh, therefore, you need more energy to remove this electron. Therefore, for the higher Z and Z effective, okay, you have a smaller size and you need more ionization energy. So for those who can't really understand um, in words, you can use diagram. So now if we focus on the train for down the group, so if we look at this diagram, going down the group, what happened to the size? We're going down the group, huh? What happened to your size? Increases. Increasing. Size increases. Why does it increase? Uh, the total number increases. Number of shell increases, and at the same time, you have the increasing shielding effect. Uh, this is what we learned uh, last lesson. Number of shell increases, shielding effect increases. Therefore, your size will become bigger. So now, when your size become bigger, what happened to your IE? In general, decrease. Decrease. That means less energy for you uh, to remove the outermost electron. So if you compare between two of these, so if I still taking um, element from my group two, the effective nuclear charge is still the same, positive two. But now, um, instead of one layer, I have two layer of my inner shell. Okay, that means shielding effect is stronger. Therefore, if I want to remove the first electron from the second example here, okay, I need a lesser IE. Because why? Now the size become bigger, attractions weaker. So to remove it, hmm, tak payah susah sangat. Sedikit energy, ah, dia sudah boleh keluar dah. So you need to understand about how the size will affect your ionization energy. So the explanation is already given in the notes. So kita tengok eh macam mana kita nak explain. Sebab dalam punya assignment pun ada juga soalan ini. Okay. But if you uh, have already go through the question in your assignment, kalau untuk part A, 
dia minta awak pilih beberapa elemen kan tiga ke dua ke awak ikutlah uh, you prefer dari group mana uh, ataupun dia ada specific one group two group uh, 17 uh, awak pilih saja elemen daripada itu okay but this one is in general kalau awak nak explain dalam assignment awak kena ikut sebiji apa elemen yang awak pilih so let's say awak pilih count down the group 17 saya pilih fluorine chlorine bromine for example so nanti dekat explanation awak kena masukkan fluorine bromine ah uh, sorry fluorine chlorine bromine ah uh, dalam explanation kena masukkan elemen apa yang awak pilih okay so we look at the explanation down the group, your first ionization energy decreases because you have increasing atomic size due to the increasing energy level and the shielding effect. So we talk about a little bit less supporting point, the distance increases and the attractions become weaker. Okay, and then less energy is needed to remove your outermost electron and thus ionization energy decreases. So it's like an introduction, explanation, and then conclusion, a very short essay. Okay, in your explanation, don't worry, you can write in um, the point form. Cuma jangan letakkan point lah. Uh, satu ayat, satu barisan. Satu ayat, satu barisan. Make it look like an essay without the bullet point. Okay, so kalau kita summarize kan across a period, i.e. increases, down the group, i.e. decreases. Ha, kalau tak, uh, kalau boleh relatekan dengan atomic size sekali lah. Okay, so ada apa-apa soalan untuk page ini? Uh, no, madam. As for now. Okay. Kalau tak ada soalan, kita proceed. Okay, yang part ini susah sikit eh. Ha, sebab kita nak bincangkan pasal anomalous. Anyone want to tell me what is the meaning of anomalous? Awak pernah jumpa sekali perkataan anomalous. Maksudnya apa ya? How sweet. Special. Special. Extraordinary. Extraordinary, abnormal. Ah, so kenapa Madam tadi highlight kan general trend? Sebab generally is increasing. So if you're looking at the graph over here, generally it is increasing. Eh, cuma kita ada exception case. Okay, memang setiap benda kita ada exception case. So the exception case in the term over here, we talk about anomalous. Right. So we are using the diagrams over here. You can see the anomalous happen when it comes to our period, uh, sorry, our group two and group 30. So transitions element kita tak bincang untuk um, ionization energy. Ionization energy, you only focus on um, S block and also P block. Group one, group two, okay, and then group 13 until group 17. Group 18 pun kita tak bincang. Okay, uh, lepas tu untuk group 15 and group 16 when you come to nitrogen and oxygen. So gen uh, normally we will pick um, the element either for period 2 or period 3. So now we are talking about period 2 element. Uh, tapi awak boleh kaitkan juga untuk element kat period 3 nanti. Okay, so between group two, group three, we take beryllium and boron as example. So over here, you can see beryllium. In the neutral beryllium, we have four electron, uh, proton number four. So when you draw about the electronic configuration, you can see one S2, two S2. So when we want to remove the very outer electron, the outermost electron, you are removing from this two S2. Um, Sharp shell. Uh, so becoming 1s2, 2s1. So ni contoh lah macam mana awak nak nampak ataupun nak interpret daripada electronic configuration dia. Kalau bandingkan dengan boron, okay, boron we have 5 proton number or 5 electron. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. 
So in boron, we are removing the first electron from 2p. Now, instead of beryllium, removing the first electron from 2s. So this is why anomalous case happen. If you look at your second point over here, this is because the 2p orbital, which has a higher energy than the 2s. Uh, 2p higher energy than 2s, this one is according to alpha principle. Okay, 1s, 2s, 2p, and so on. So you'll learn about the increasing energy during um, the topic of alpha principle. So 2p having higher energy than 2s. Therefore, we can easily remove your 2p electron compared to 2s. Kalau nak nak tengok pada energy level diagram pun boleh. Let's say 2s dekat sini. Okay, 2p atas sikit. Ah, jangan lupa eh, 2p kita ada 3 orbital. So let's say over here, we have electron in our 2p subshell. Compared to 2s, another 2 subshell. So this one is our energy. Over here, you just imagine we have our nucleus. Down at the bottom here. Ah, So kalau 2s, Energi dia lagi rendah, maksudnya dia lagi dekat dengan nucleus sebenarnya. Uh, so attractions between 2s orbital and your nucleus is much more stronger comparing to your 2p and also the nucleus. Okay, therefore you need a lesser energy to remove the electron from 2p orbital in boron. Uh, kalau kita bandingkan eh, antara boron dengan beryllium, bandingkan energy level dia. So for this one is the supporting point for you. You don't have to include in your um, explanation. Tak payah lukis. Cuma kena faham kenapa 2P ni dia punya energy lagi tinggi daripada 2S. Ha. So kalau 2P higher energy, in another words, less energy to remove the outer uh, to remove the electron from 2P. So we can also use this idea to talk about period 3 elements for group 2 and group 30. So dekat sini kita boleh bandingkan antara uh, magnesium, group 2, period 3. Okay, dengan aluminium, group 13, period 3. Uh, so ada dua contoh lah dekat sini. So dalam awak punya assignment pun termasuk juga untuk soalan ini, anomalous case. So you can use this to help you to explain your answer. So ada soalan tak dekat soalan uh, untuk anomalous case for period 2, group 2, group 13? Tak ada. No, madam. So another anomalous, anomalous case happened when we come to uh, group 15 and 16. Uh, kenapa? Kalau awak tengok dia punya electronic configuration. So let's say over here we take the example nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen we have 7 proton number. So in the electronic configuration, it's until 3p3. Uh, sorry, 2p3. But for oxygen, we have eight proton number. It is until 2p4. So we are not longer comparing between S and P orbital. Uh, example just now, we're comparing S and P because there is a significant difference in the energy level. Okay, but now both are in 2p. Then what can we compare? Remember about your Hans rules. Okay, so for this one, the electron to be removed, the first electron from your nitrogen will remove from 2p3. Okay, so after you remove, it will become 2p2. So the important one is the original electronic configuration. So oxygen, you're removing the first electron from 2p4. So now both are 2p. So when you want to look at the orbital diagram, you can see in nitrogen, for this 2p, I have three single electrons. According to Hansru, 
gen degenerate orbital will fill in singly first before we pair up. Okay, and then for oxygens inside your 2p over here, we have four electrons. So we have one, two, three, singly first, and then the fourth electrons we pair up. So now we want to remove one electron each from nitrogen and also from oxygen. So electron minus satu yang kita kena keluarkan. Uh, so last, the very last electron over here. So daripada nitrogen, kita keluarkan electron dekat 2 P3. From oxygen, we remove this pair up electron. Uh, remember, that is the last electron that we fill in. So we remove the very last electron. Okay? And then from this 2 P4. So now, if you remember about the halfly fill, completely fill, partially fill, um, and then nak ingatkan sekali lagi eh. Partially fill, uh, half fill, kalau untuk P orbital eh. Half fill, it means is P3. Okay. Com completely fill, of course, when you fully filling your P sub shell, it is P6. So that means any other number is partially filled. So over here, P1, uh, P2, P4, P5, this is partially filled. So to comparing their stability, you have to understand that half filled subshell and completely subshell is more stable. So when you talk about stability, more stable, when you want to remove electron, you need more energy. So dekat konsep antara grup 15 dengan 16, kita comparekan stability subshell dia. Sebab so, energy, energy level dia sama. So, over here we see ionization energy for the oxygen is smaller than that of nitrogen. This is because in nitrogen, our electron is removed for the half field 2p orbital. Okay, half field 2p orbital is more stable. Uh, therefore, more energy is required to remove the electron from nitrogen. Comparing to oxygen, electron is removing from the partially 2p. Uh, P4 is partially. Therefore, it is less stable. When it is less stable, less energy required. Okay, then you do a comparison over here. This is the reason. Okay, and then the next sentence is your supporting point. Okay, to compare which one need more energy. More energy needed to remove electron from a more stable half field 2p orbital in nitrogen. Okay, comparing to the less stable partially field 2p of oxygen. And then lastly, you just talk about the ionization comparisons again. So to conclude over here, group 2, group 13, comparing between energy level, the S and P subshell. Group 15, group 16, comparing about the halfly fill or partially fill orbitals, talking about the stability. So any questions about the anomalous case in this part? Madam terlalu cepat. Okay. Ada soalan nak tanya tak untuk yang ini? Boleh cubalah untuk explain kalau awak nak untuk uh, satu group lagi. Group 15, 16 in period 3 we have phosphorus and also sulfur. Ha, boleh cubalah untuk practice kita explainkan untuk phosphorus dengan sulfur. Uh, guna concept halfly fill, partially fill stability. Okay, and this one, let. Uh, madam. Yes. Um, for the uh, element between group 2 and group 13, it is like continuously decreasing or just the uh, um, group 13 is a special one? It's just group, uh, group 2, group 13 is a special one. If continuously we're talking about genera, it should be increasing across period. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Mm. Right. So normally you will see the question only period two, period three. Period four, 
um, sometimes the most case is about period two, period three. Any other questions? Is it so, Lanya? Um, I want to uh, make it clear. So, so it means like the group three is um, higher than group two. The ionization energy. Group three is lower. Is lower. Yes, group three is lower. Oh, so from group two to group thirteen, it is like continuously decreasing, like. Mm, we are not saying the continuous because it just happened in that it, it at that point only. Throughout group two until group thirteen, is it? Yes. So that means group two, group uh, thirteen, we have beryllium boron, and then when you move down the period, you have um magnesium and aluminium. So same thing happens to magnesium and aluminium. Uh, what about the elements between the magnesium and aluminium? What's the trend? It's the same like beryllium boron. So let's say, Madam, give you examples. So. Okay, so a good question from Sue. So we talk about another example if we're comparing magnesium, group 2. Okay, group 13, we have um, aluminium. Okay, magnesium, just now we say what is the um, proton number again? Uh, 12. 12. Okay. So now the electronic configurations from magnesium is until 3s2. Okay. How about aluminium? Where is it until? Sorry, this one's 6. Yeah? And then 3s2. And we entering the P subshell 3p1. Uh, because aluminium group 13, we have 3 valence electron. Okay. So you're looking at this one. This is the valence electronic configuration. So the very last electron that fill in the electronic configuration is the one that we want to remove first. Okay, because remember, this magnesium is neutral. This aluminum is neutral. So when you want to remove the first, I, uh, first electron, that is your IE one. Uh, so we remove from here. Oh, we remove from the last one entering the valence shell is your 3P. So we remove from this 3P. Okay, so when we want to compare about the ionization energy, okay, magnesium we remove from 3S. Now, uh, 3S having a lower energy. Okay, and then um, when you say lower energy over here, is it means it is uh, closer to the nucleus. Okay, this one is closer to nucleus. Okay, and we focus on the aluminium when you remove the first electron from 3P. 3P having higher energy. That means it is further away from the nucleus. Further away from nucleus. Okay, so now if you talk about the attraction, which one having stronger attraction? Is it the one in 3S or the one in 3P? 3S. 3s okay so over 3s over here electron in 3s having stronger attraction comparing to 3p uh we have a weaker attraction okay so now if we conclude the very uh comparison between 3s 3p so now which one required less energy to remove it from 3p 3p Okay, so 3P required less energy to remove the outer electron. Okay, so if you recall back the destinations for ionization energy is the minimum energy required. Okay, to remove the one more of electron. Therefore, we can conclude over here, IE1 of our aluminium is lower comparing to magnesium.
So the trend normally is going up. Generally, a cross period because size becomes smaller. Or generally, it is in, uh, increasing. It should be increasing. But now, because of the energy level 3P and 3S, there is some difference. Therefore, you require a little bit less energy for aluminium, okay, comparing to three, uh, be comparing between 3P and 3S. Is that okay, sir? Uh, okay. I, I just realized that I mixed up because I thought it, it was also applicable to the other periods as well. Okay. So yes. you can uh, remember about period two, period three. Okay, period two, beryllium boron, and then period three, magnesium aluminium. So always it will be very helpful for you to look at the electronic configuration. Okay, so it doesn't uh, include the transition elements. Uh... Yes, no transition element. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any other questions? Orang lain ada soalan? I hope this helps uh, because uh, maybe some of you were confused between higher energy, uh, lower energy, comparing with more energy, less energy. Dua benda ni berbeza eh. More energy, less energy, berapa banyak energy yang saya perlukan. Tapi higher energy, lower energy cakap pasal um, dia punya distance antara subshell ataupun elektron dekat subshell tersebut dengan nucleus kita. Ha, so dua point ini. Um, hopefully harap boleh membantulah dalam memahami konsep ini. Okay. So let's just try a little bit of the exercises. So this one we will do it together. And you may ask questions from time to time. So first one. First questions, consider the following elements PQRS. You have the proper number, 3, 7, 11, 12. So for 1A, determine the block, the group, the period of each element. Okay, B, choose the element that has the same chemical properties. Okay, when you talk about same chemical property, maksudnya the other valence electron yang sama. Oh, same valence electron will give the similar chemical property. Okay, the, according to the group. And then 1C, which of this element has the smallest atomic radius? So you need to understand about the train across the period becomes smaller, down the group become bigger. And last one, arrange the element in ascending order or increasing order. Daripada uh, kecil sangkat sampai besar, ya? Okay, for the first ionization energy and explain. Okay, so to look at the position, the period, the block, the group, we first look at the electronic configuration. Okay, so Madam, bagi masa sikit eh untuk awak complete kan. Boleh masukkan dalam table ataupun awak buat uh, satu persatu. Tapi kena jugalah ada electronic configuration. I give um, some time to complete this one. And then we can check the answers together. Okay. Um, jangan rasa sebab chapter ini adalah untuk assignment saja, ya tak penting eh. Chapter ini pun sangat penting juga sebab dia adalah general information uh, about periodic table. Uh, kalau sesiapa yang nak ikut uh, subject related to biology or chemistry in your university, this will be a little bit helpful. And also in our chapter 4, also we're using a little bit of this chapter. Uh, so jangan rasa, oh, Madam sudah bagi nota, assignment, uh, kita boleh salin je, blah, blah, blah. Tak boleh, eh? kena faham juga konsep dia. Okay. So for the first element, P, electronic configuration, starting with. 
Mai dah bagi nama eh, boleh? Okay, so we start for MS32. Can I have... Siapa ada kat sini? Akma. Akma Mustafa. Yes, madam. Okay, uh, uh, Akma, can I know what is the electronic configurations for P? 1S2, 2S1. 1S2, 2S1. How about the block? Block S. Group? Group 1, period 2. Yes, very good. So, they got sini period 2. Very good. And for Q, can I have someone from MS7? Um, Saidatu Izua. Eh, jangan mana bagi nama terus left eh. Right, Sa Saidatu ada? Ada, Madam. Eh, uh, boleh ke? Uh, try untuk Q. Uh, okay. <laughs> Portal number 7. Ah, so, macam mana kita nak keluarkan electronic configurations dia? Yang lain prepare. Mereka akan panggil lagi untuk R and S. Uh, 1S2. 2S2. 3P3. Tengok apa yang Amanda tulis. Ah, uh, 2S2 and 3P. Eh. 2P? Eh, no. Uh, 3P3. 3P3. Sorry. So, which group? Ah, uh, group P. And, sorry, 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 sorry. Block P. Block P, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Group? Uh, group 7, 17. Eh, alright, 15. Ah, madam, 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 madam bantu. So, madam, ah, madam bantu. Nah, <laughs> kalau 2S, 2S2, 2P3 adalah valence electronic configuration. Jadi, bilangan valence cell berapa? Valence electron ada berapa? Kalau ada 5. Ada 5. Uh, so, uh, group? Group 5. Oh. 15. Brock P, starting from... 13 until 18. So, kalau 5 valence electron, maka dia daripada kumpulan 15. Okay. Okay, how about the period? Um. Highest value of N? Two. Two, still the same, period two. Okay, element R. Oh, lucky next one. Aida Arena MS8. Yes, madam. Yes, very good. Mm, how about R? Uh, 1S2. Mm -hmm. 2S2, 2P6, 3S1. Very good. The block? Uh, S block. Group? Group 1. Period? Period 3. Very good. Well done. Okay, and next one we have sulfur MS9. Can I have Z Tian? Yes, madam. Yes, how about uh, for element S? 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2. Okay, what is the block? S block. And the group? 2. Period? 3. Okay, very good. So, now we have already figured out the positions of the four elements here. So choose the element which has the same chemical property and what which element show you the similar uh, valence electron. P and R. P and R. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to write over here for element P and also element R. As you can see over here, they are from the same group. Uh, same group, same valence electron, therefore same chemical property. Okay. So for C, a little bit challenging. Which element has the smallest atomic radius out of this four? And this happen, I suggest. Which one have the smallest atomic radius? 
P kot P P Smallest uh, Q. Smallest Q. Q Q Q Q P Q mm. So R and S automatic out betul kan? R and S automatic out so about down the group awak kena ingat okay. Ah, uh, mana nak awak tulis juga lah okay. Kalau across the period you need to understand um, the size increasing or decreasing from left to right. Decreasing. D. Decreasing. Decrease. decrease. Okay, down the group increase or decrease. Increase. 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 So kita kena pilih lah daripada period tu. Ha, sebab kalau compare antara period 2 dengan period 3, period 2 lagi kecil. Okay. So sekarang ni, uh, elemen P and Q. Eh, nampaknya P lagi ke, nak lagi sikit elektron. Ha, so ramai yang akan pilih P. Tapi sebenarnya uh, P root 1. Which is on the very left. And then group 15 is slightly towards the right side of your period. So across period 2 from left to right, okay, from P to Q, the atomic, sorry, the proton number increases, therefore the size decreases. So they can see me, smaller radius, it goes for your element Q. So kalau nak susun boleh juga, so kita susun dekat sini, period 2, uh, period 3. So dekat sini period 3 kita ada group 1 R. R dekat sini. Okay. S dekat sini. Ha. Lepas tu untuk P, P dekat period 2 group 1. Ah P kecil sikit. Tapi bila awak sampai dekat Q, Q group 15 eh, is much more smaller. Ha. So you actually can use the periodic table. Imagine the periodic table. Put these elements into the periodic table and then compare. Okay, so your answer go for the element Q. Okay, siapa yang paling besar size dia? PQRS. Which one is the biggest? R. R. Ha, so daripada lukisan ni pun boleh nampak lah R is the biggest. Q is the smallest. Okay, this will help in your questions D. Arrange element in ascending order of your first ionization energy. So, kita memang tak boleh nampak terus ionization energy. Maka awak kena start daripada size. Okay, so we starting from the size first. Um, you write in general first lah. If you have a bigger size, ini cuma idea eh. Bigger size. It gives you a smaller IE. Uh, or another way, uh, another way around. Smaller size, higher ionization energy. So, if the question is asking for ascending order of IE, we need the smallest uh, or the lowest IE. Okay, two words, the highest ionization energy. Okay, so when you want to compare ionization's energy, we starting from the size first. Uh, so you know the inversely proportional be between size and IE. Therefore, size for the lowest IE, what, what will be its size? Biggest or smallest? Bigger. Biggest. So kita catat sikit catatan dekat sini. Kita start dari the biggest. Sebab kita nak jawapan dia uh, lowest IE starting first. Ascending order. Uh, so kalau highest IE, Kita punya size mesti paling kecil. Smaller size give you highest ionization energy. So kita susun dulu size dia. Size mana satu paling besar kalau ikut diagram dekat sini. Which, which size give you the biggest? R. 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 Okay. And then going to the second biggest. E. P ke S? S. S dulu eh sebab kita punya period. Uh, so R and S is bigger than P and Q. So R dulu lepas tu kita S. Baru kita proceed kepada period uh, dua. So which one's going to the third biggest? P. P. And then the smallest Q. go to? Q. Okay. Since we know that the bigger the size, the smallest the ionization energy, 
Therefore, your answer over here, starting the, from the lowest ionization energy, it goes to our element R. Then follow ascending order, uh, getting bigger and bigger. Followed by S, followed by P, followed by Q. Okay, since Q has the smallest size, therefore it has the biggest ionization energy. So in your answer explanations over here, you can mention about the relationship. So Madam Salin yang ini, awak boleh salin dalam bawah punya jawapan ya. Okay, ionization energy depends on atomic size. Okay, and then you tell about the relationship. Okay, Q has the smallest atomic size. Or you want to say atomic radius is okay? Therefore, it has the highest ionization energy. Okay, so now we're explaining about the Q or you want to talk about R also no problem or you want to talk about generally uh, the bigger the size, the smaller the ionization energy. Okay, so choose one specific explanation. So you may copy down this one. Okay, ada apa-apa soalan untuk um, soalan yang pertama ni ni? Um, yeah. uh, kenapa uh, size uh, atom S tu lagi besar daripada P? Hmm. Cepat kita tengok dia punya period. Ah, kenapa kita cakap S dia lagi besar daripada P? Sebab S dia dekat period 3. Ha, kalau period 3 awak tahu energy level dia ada 3 layer. Ha, 3 shell. Okay, so shielding effect is much more bigger comparing to your uh, P which come from period 2. Ha, period 2 only 2 layer. Shielding effect is a little bit smaller. Ha, so dekat situ kita boleh compare dia punya energy, uh, energy shell. Ha, dia punya shell dekat situ. S lagi besar daripada P. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, madam. Alright. Ada soalan lain? Tak ada soalan, kita proceed kepada soalan kedua. Okay. Element R has electronic configuration. So, given over here, we have... 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4 and electronic configurations of element Q until 3p3. So between Q and R, which element has the highest first ionization energy given reason for each element? So jawapan pun Madam sudah bagi, dia lebih kurang sama macam anomalous case yang tadi kita bincang. Okay, but I want you to interpret the questions. What do you see the differences? What is the difference in question uh, two over here? The factor apa yang menjejaskan IE untuk R and Q? Electron values, madam. Mm, electronic group. configuration. The group. Lagi. Apa beza ni? Apa yang Madam bulatkan dekat situ? 3P4 dengan 3T? 3P? 3. Balance electron. Balance electron. Okay. So dekat sini kita dah bandingkan. What, what is the main factors? If you look at 3P4, 3P3. What is the main factor? Stable or not? The? Stable.
stability. stability. Okay, the stability of this um, electron. Uh, so 3p4 is a partially filled orbital. Okay, whereas your 3p3 is a halfway filled. Which one is more stable, 3p3 or 3p4? 3p3. 3p3. Okay, then after you understand, then you can proceed to your explanation. Cuma dekat sini, Madam bagi awak fill in the blank straight away. Bila Madam bagi, awak boleh rujuk lah macam mana nak jawab soalan macam ini. Okay, so IE1 of element mm -mm, is higher than IE1 of... So how am I going to fill in? IE... Which one is higher? Q or R? Q. 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 Because Q having 3P3 more stable, need more energy. Okay, so it's higher than um, that of R. Okay, in element Q, electron is removed from a... Uh, what should I fill in the blank? Half. Half fill 3P orbital, which is more or less? More. More stable. Okay, whereas for element R, electron is removed from partially, partially fill orbital, which is less, less stable. So more energy is re uh, needed to remove electron from half, half, half fill 3p orbital of Q. Uh, then the less stable partially filled three p orbitals of R. Ah, uh, yeah, any easy sentence. Okay, because they are having similar subshell, then we comparing about stability. Kalau subshell ya perbeza kita bandingkan energy level dia. Okay, and then question number three: the first ionization's energy for fluorine and oxygen is given. Okay, dekat sini for re. Uh, madam, so here. for the more energy needed to remove to evidence that you see. Uh, more energy is needed to remove electron from more stable half field 3P of Q. Oh. Lebih kurang sama macam atas je, cuma kita konklukkan comparison energy dia. Uh, then a less stable partially field 3P orbital of R. Okay, so we'll proceed to question number three. Fluorine having the first IE1681, oxygen having the IE, the first IE1314. So we want to see why fluorine having higher IE1 comparing to oxygen. So the first questions over here talk about atomic radius based on their first IE. So which one is higher? Fluorine or oxygen, according to the questions? Fluorine. Fluorine. Okay, it's higher than oxygen. It means that more energy or less energy? More. More energy is required to remove. Dua boleh lah kalau awak ceritakan less energy, it refers to oxygen. Uh, if you write more energy, it refers to fluorine. Okay, so more energy needed to remove um, from foreign because you're having the higher values over here. Uh, value dia lagi besar, maksudnya IE1 dia lagi besar. And then it is because the valence electron E. Da, da, da. Uh, nak isi apa ya? Kalau kita yang point yang ketuga, ter, kedua kita ceritakan foreign, point yang ketiga pun kita ikut foreign juga. Uh, kalau point yang kedua awak ceritakan oksigen, less energy. Then the third point you will talk about oksigen also. Okay. So in the third point over here, because uh, we talk about fluorine. So valence electrons in fluorine are held more or less to the nucleus. More. More. Tightly. Yes. Okay, remember, if you need more energy, that means, uh, apa ni, daya tak taikan dia lagi kuat. Uh, that's why you need to pull it. Uh, you need to supply more energy to take it out. 
Ha, so macam kita nak nak buka satu Tupperware ke satu uh, I would say a can then you need more energy. Uh, comparing to those uh, who, who is less yang tak berapa ketat. Ha, kita perlukan energy yang tak berapa banyak. Okay. So comparing with O in this case. Therefore, what happens to the atomic mass? Uh, sorry, atomic mass pula. Atomic radius. Which one is smaller? F. F. Okay, so atomic radius is smaller than oxygen. Also, you can talk about the relationship lah. Dah, kalau awak tak nak ceritakan untuk ni, boleh cerita juga untuk atomic radius. Okay, macam tadi lah. So, this is another way of you explaining. The smaller the size, the higher the ionization energy. Okay, so this is another example of you um, explaining about the forces of attraction. Held more tightly means you have stronger nucleus attraction. Okay. Madam? Yeah? Uh, yang Madam tulis more energy tu, kalau kita letak nilai energy yang diperlukan tu boleh ke? Hmm, maksudnya dekat poin yang kedua ya? Yeah? Ha. Okay, kalau awak letak 1681 uh, dengan value dia sebenarnya tak nampak comparison. Saya cuma bagi value tapi saya tak compare. Yang dekat sini pentingnya adalah compare. Ha, bandingkan compare, contoh dalam awak punya jawapan mesti kena ada more, less, stronger, weaker, higher, lower. Ini adalah comparison. Uh, tapi kalau supply uh, bagi value ataupun kita bagi value proton number for example that is not comparison that is just a statement only uh, so dekat sini kena ada comparison is that okay for you thank you medium all right tapi tak salah awak boleh dekat situ more energy sebelah dia awak bracket kan tulis value ah uh, boleh bagi awak sendiri nampak kan uh, value dia lagi tinggi. Okay, yang penting, comparison, the the words more. Okay. So, for part B, link it to the ionization energy. So, over here, electronic configurations, you can write yourself, isn't it? Ah, dekat sini, komplikkan sendiri. Okay. So, oxygen has a higher second ionization energy. So now we are talking about second ionization energy. Okay. Awak oh, uh, keluarkan tadi dia punya electronic configuration dulu. Untuk foreign kita ada apa ya? 1S, 2S. 2S. 2. And then 2P. 2P, 5. Oxygen? 1S, 2, 2S, 2, 2P, 4. Okay. So, siapa boleh bagi tahu, Madam, second ionization energy nak keluarkan elektronnya ke berapa? Yang kedua. Yang kedua. So, maksudnya selepas remove uh, elektron yang pertama untuk fluorine, it becoming 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. And then after, for oxygen, after the first electron, the second electron you are removing from 2p3. So now you're looking at the second electron to be removed. So it is important for you to know which electron to be removed. So now oxygen has a higher or lower second IE? Higher. Higher. Why do you think so? Half leaf fill, more stable, more energy required. Okay, so it is because the second electron in oxygen is removed from a... Uh, uh, now remove dari mana? Half fail to p orbital, which is more stable. Okay, so yang lain isi sendiri eh. More energy required to remove electron from in O positive. Eh, jadi O minus pula. O positive as lepas keluarkan electron. Okay, then the... Partially fill 2p orbital in F positive 1. 
Okay, so any questions for question number 3B? Um, more energy required to remove electron from? Mm. Anyone want to help me answering this? To remove from? Half fill. Half fill to P orbital in oxygen. Then? Partially. Partially fill to P in fluorine. Alright, thank you. Hmm. Tapi kena tahu eh dekat sini adalah dari selepas kita sudah uh, keluarkan elektron yang pertama. Okay? Right. So exercise ini tak perlu hantar dalam GC. No need. Uh, because madam have another work for you later on. Okay. So just now we talk about the ionization energy, how to comparing the first IE, the anomalous case. Now we have to um, describe successive ionization energy. Successive maksudnya berturut-turut. Selepas so, awak keluarkan first IE, second IE, third IE, four IE, etc. So kita ada IE 1, IE 2, IE 3 dan seterusnya. Okay, so if you look at the diagram also, ionization is increasing in the following order. So that means we can say that the very first electron to be removed, you have the lowest first ionization energy. Sebab, IE pertama, elektron pertama keluarkan daripada neutral atom. Uh, memang perlu energy, tapi dia daripada neutral atom. Eh, IE kedua, Datang daripada nucleus yang ada positif one charge. Okay, elektron kedua keluar daripada cat ion. Uh, cat ion positively charged. So maksudnya uh, the nucleus attractions become stronger. So the second ionization energy increases. Okay, ionization energy yang ketiga lagi tinggi. Sebab ionization energy yang ketiga ni kita keluarkan daripada Ion yang ada positive to charge. Now let's say dekat sini madam bagi uh, simbol eh. Air pertama kita keluarkan daripada X tak ada charge. Air kedua kita keluarkan daripada X positive charge positive one. Air ketiga kita keluarkan daripada X positive to charge. Air keempat keluar dari mana? Positive three. Three positive. Ah, and so on. Ayi yang kelima keluarkan daripada X empat positive. So maksudnya kita perlukan lagi banyak lagi banyak lagi banyak energy untuk keluarkan elektron yang seterusnya. Uh, that's why we say in general the ionization energy increases. So here is the value lah. Normally the value in, is in kilojoule per mole. So IE1 if according to the um, electronic configuration. First IE from 2S. Second IE also from 2S. Then starting from the third IE, it comes from the inner shell, inner electron. So IE yang ketiga, IE yang keempat, daripada 1S. Okay, so um, explanation given for you over here. Successive ionization energy will always increase because when electron is removed, from an ion with increasing positive charge, nucleus attractions become stronger. Therefore, more energy is needed. Okay, so this is the general trait. But I hope everyone understand IE1 starting from the very outside of the shell. So, maksudnya dia mesti keluarkan daripada awak punya valence shell. Yang paling luar sekali. Itu adalah elektron yang pertama. Yang kita nak keluarkan. Okay, and then from this data, um, the successive ionization energy, we can use it to determine number of valence electron. So since you know about valence electron, we can identify which group it is from. Okay, and then we can know also the position. What is the period? What is the group? Since we know about the valence electron. Okay, and then last but not least, we can um, answer the questions. Um, asking for electronic configurations or the valence electronic configuration. Right, dekat sini, minta tambah satu lagi eh. Ataupun valence electronic configuration. Okay. 
So ini adalah function untuk kita bina successive data. Ah, dan bagi untuk gambar raja untuk awak tengok dekat sini lah. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. IE yang pertama, elektron yang pertama. Dekat luas sekali. Elektron yang kedua, ah, IE dua. Elektron yang ketiga daripada inertia. Kalau awak tengok pada diagram, ini adalah elektron yang ketiga. IE ketiga. Ha, elektron yang last sekali kalau untuk beryllium eh, uh, is the IE4. Okay, so always from the outermost electron. So the next example given, this one also you can find it from the lectures not in our unit. Okay, and then extract the information from them. So given over here, we have silicon proton number 14. So dari sini sebenarnya kita boleh keluarkan dia punya electronic configuration. So 2P6, then we have 3S2, 3P2. Okay, so kalau kita tahu elemen, senang saja kita nak tahu dia punya valence electron. But um, in most of the case, they will give you an unknown. Contoh, uh, elemen X has a proton number 14. Identify which group it is from. So, ini adalah cara dia. Elektron yang pertama daripada 3P2, kedua pun daripada 3P2. The third electron from 3S2, four electron from 3S2. Then, your fifth electron is coming from your inner shell. So, kalau boleh dekat sini awak identify dulu. Inner shell dekat mana, valence shell dekat mana. Okay. So, if you look at the data in this column, first IE, first electron from 3P, 700, 800, kilo, 786 kilojoule per mole. Second IE from 3P as well, 1580. Third electron from 3S subshell, 3230. Fourth electron from 3S, 43460. Yes, no problem. Ionization energy keep on increasing. But where increase the most? Uh, so, kalau awak tengok pada IE yang kelima ini. Okay. Fifth electron is removed from the inner shell. When it is from the inner shell, it experiences a stronger nucleus attraction. Therefore, you can see there is a sudden increase, a very big increase over here. From 4360, then straight away into... 16,000. Uh, so over here, you can identify where is the sudden increase. Okay, if you're looking at the diagrams over here, your first IE, uh, remove the first electron. Okay, second IE, second electron. Third IE, the third electron. The fourth IE, the fourth electron. So when it comes into... The fifth IE, so let's say Nathan pilih IE, uh, sorry, elektron yang kelima ini. Dia datang daripada inner shell. Therefore, it experience a stronger nucleus attraction. So, kita nampak, boleh nampak daripada value dia ada great jump. Uh, ada certain reference book dia, mean, dia tulis great jump. Okay, some of the reference book it mentioned sudden increase. Both mean the same thing. Cara nak tengok dia punya perbezaan, awak boleh tolak saja. Nah, ataupun cari ratio. Ha, paling senang tolaklah 16100 awak tolak ke 4360. Awak akan nampak dekat sini paling ketara. Okay, comparing to this one, differences only about 7000. 7000 plus 700. Okay, um, and then for between IE... 2 and IE3, okay, about 1,005. Uh, this one, maybe just roughly saja, yang ini lebih kurang 1,000. Ha, tapi dekat sini, kita ada 12,000. So, can see over here, this is your great jump. This is your sudden increase. You can only use the sub sub subtraction saja, main tolak saja. Okay. And then for the explanation, you need to follow. First, identify sudden increase. And you need to mention from where to where. Or between which two ionization energy. So, contoh eh. 
sudden increase in ionizations from IE4 to IE5 between both of this IE. Now, so mention lah IE4 dengan IE5. That means your first, your fifth electron is removed from the inner shell. Okay, from the inner shell. Therefore, more energy is needed to remove the electron from the inner shell. And you know that there is four um, valence electron. Uh, so, but kalau electron yang kelima datang daripada inner shell, maka tadi yang empat kita remove adalah valence electron dia. Okay, so it has four valence electron. Therefore, it is from group 40. Remember, we are not talking about transitions element. So, four valence electron, it is from group 40. Okay, since we know this element is silicon, it has three energy level. Therefore, the valence electronic configuration is 3s2, 3p2. Kalau awak tak tahu uh, period dia, sebab kemungkinan kita tak tahu uh, period dia berapa. Uh, kita hanya tuliskan N, uh, ns2, np2. Uh, so, N refer to the energy level. So, this um, is the answer if you don't know about the period. Okay, no information for period. Sebab bukan setiap kali kita ada information untuk period. Sekarang ni tahu sebab kita sudah tahu elemen adalah silikon. Okay, so any questions for the examples given here? Ada soalan ke? No, tak ada soalan, ya. Okey, kalau tak ada soalan, kita cuba. Ah, soalan. So, in the questions, they given you a table. Uh, Information for lithium, beryllium, and also boron. Giving you the electronic configurations. Then you have to explain. Okay, using the sensitive ionization energy, determine the valence electron and the group in the periodic table. Okay, so if you look at the table over here, we interpret uh, um, the first IE means the first electron you are removing. Okay, so the first electron from lithium, removing from 2S. Second IE from 1S, the third IE from 1S. IE4, IE5 ni tak ada sebab dia hanya tiga elektron saja. Okay, so... If you look at between IE1, IE2, IE3, IE4, mana satu ada jam yang paling besar? Antara mana satu dengan mana satu? Kalau kita kira sajalah, jangan tengok jawapan dulu. Bagi tahu medal dekat sini, dia junior grade jam berapa? Kita tekan calculator je. Antara IE1, IE2, berapa beza dia? Anyone? 6777. Okay, 6777. Kalau untuk uh, antara IE2 dengan IE3? IE1 13. 4513. Okay, 4513. Mana satu lagi ketara? Lagi besar maksudnya? IE1 to IE2. Hmm, IE1 to IE2. So you just find the differences. Which one is bigger? That means the greatest uh, increases it be is between that two IE. Maka awak punya jawapan dekat sini explanation dia. Sudden increase between IE2 to IE1. I'm oh, sorry, IE1 to IE2. So the second electron is removed from your inner shell. Kalau antara IE1 dengan IE2, maksudnya IE2, elektron yang kedua yang keluar daripada inner shell. Kalau antara IE2 dengan IE3, IE3 dia tinggi kan value dia? Maksudnya elektron yang ketiga adalah datang daripada inner shell. Okay, so IE2, higher value, therefore second electron. From the inner shell, more energy is needed, therefore lithium has one balanced electron and it is from group 1. Yang soalan ni senang sikit sebab kita sudah tahu elemen, kita sudah tahu electronic configuration. So kita faham je dia punya valence electron ada berapa. Ha, cuma kita kena terangkan daripada dia punya data. 
Okay. So go to the second one, beryllium. Sudden increase dekat mana? Which is the sudden increase between which value, uh, which IE and which IE? IE2, IE3. IE? 2, two IE3. To IE3. Okay, so you find the differences for every uh, gap. Uh, carikan dia punya perbezaan. Nanti awak akan nampak yang paling ketara adalah antara IE2 dengan IE3. Okay, so which electron is from the inner shell? Uh, the third. The third one. Okay, because uh, IE3 is higher. Okay, so the third electron is removed from inner shell. Beryllium has how many electron? Balanced electron. Kalau elektron yang ketiga adalah datang daripada inner shell, maka dia ada berapa valence electron? Two. 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 Thank you. And then it is from group two. Okay, for boron, this is not beryllium, this is boron. Sudden increase between IE3, IE4. Ha, lo tekan calculator satu persatu. Nah, jumpa sudden increase dekat situ awak akan nampak yang mana satu elektron datang daripada inner shell. So, over here between IE3 and IE4. So, which electron is from the inner? Uh, the fourth electron. The fourth electron. So how many valence electron for boron? Three. Three valence electron. Okay, so kalau awak interpret eh, untuk sesiapa yang kurang faham sikit, kita tengok contoh boron. Ni yang paling tinggi. Nah, so great jump in between IE3 and IE4. 25020 adalah lagi tinggi. Maka dekat sini, okay. Antara ketiga-tiga value, maksudnya ada tiga elektron yang daripada valence shell. That also means you have three valence electron. Since three valence electron, it is from group 13. Bukan tiga eh. Kita tak ceritakan pasal transition. Hanya main group block S and block P only. So any questions for this one? Ada soalan ke? No, I do. Okay. So, tadi kita tengok data dalam table kan? Ah, sebenarnya kita boleh ceritakan pasal graph juga. Okay, so if you look at question number two, the examples given here. I have this graph. Um, ionization energy about number of electron remove. Uh, so this is my first electron remove. So this is the first electron. This is my second electron. This is my third electron and so on. Okay. And then this is my IE1. This is my IE2, IE3 and so on. Uh, so ionization energy increases. Diagram ini boleh juga ceritakan uh, bilangan number elect uh, the valence electron. So you can can you see which one is the sudden increase according to this graph? This is four, five, six, seven, and etc. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So where do you see sudden increase? Four. Between. Between IE3 to IE4. Uh, so, dekat sini IE4. So, antara dua ni. Antara IE3 dengan IE4. Kita nampak, okay, there is a sudden increase. So, which electron is from the inner shell? Is the third electron or the fourth electron? Fourth. Hmm, pandai. So, elektron yang keempat ni. Okay, so the fourth electron is from the inner shell. 
Okay. So maka kita tahu, okay, dekat sini adalah kita punya valence electron. Okay. Lepas tu kita ada starting daripada uh, elemen yang, uh, sorry, elektron yang keempat didatang daripada inner shell. So from the fourth electron until this one, this come from the same layer. Nah, so but the 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 other lah consistently increasing IE. So from electron, the fourth electron, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven over here is from the same number of shell. Okay, same n. Lepas tu kita nampak lagi satu sudden increase. Okay, so that means the other one, this two electron is from another layer. Okay, it's from another layer. So, kalau Madam bagi tahu kesemua elektron dekat sini, okay, 13 elektron dekat sini adalah untuk elemen Z. Okay, for elemen Z. So, it means that you have three, of, uh, three energy level. The very inner one, because it has the highest most ionization energy, that means it is closest to the nucleus strongest nucleus attraction. So maka elektron yang paling dua kat dalam ni adalah datang daripada N sama dengan 1. Ini energy level yang kedua awak punya 2S2 2P6. And energy yang paling luas sekali 3S2 3P1. Ha, so boleh catat jugalah untuk dia punya electronic configuration 1S2. Okay yang ini adalah 2S2, 2P6. Ada 8 elektron. Okay, layer ketiga ni ada 3S2, 3P1. 3 valence electron. Okay, so is there any question you would like to ask about this diagram? You need to interpret the graph. Extra knowledge for you. Tak ada. Okay, kalau tak ada, tolong uh, isikan dekat jawapan kat bawah ya. State the number of valence electron for Z and explain. How many valence electron? Three. Three. Sudden increase between? IE3 to IE4. Very good, well done. And then we have the which electron? Four. The? The fourth. The fourth electron. Uh, it's from the inner shell. Inner shell, yes, well done. Okay, which has a stable noble gas electronic configuration. That one is the add out point only, ah, uh, for the explanation. Okay, so which group does it belong to? Thirteen. Thirteen, and which block? P. Block P. Yeah, lain cek jawapan sekali eh. Okay, ionization energy on the graph correspond to all electron in the element. So right is electronic configuration. So the very uh, inner shell, the second shell, and the outermost shell, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p1. Okay, last but not least, we need to form the most stable Z ion. Since we have three valence electron, therefore, what is the ion that you're going to form? Z3 plus. Z3 plus. By removing three electron to achieve the octet or your stable noble gas configuration. So, kalau soalan cuma minta awak state, uh, write, name, uh, teruskan kepada jawapan tanpa explanation. Ya, tiga tu saja eh. State, write, name. Yang lain, majority semua perlu explanation. Kalau tak, dia akan uh, bagi soalan macam ni. Explain kat belakang dia. Ataupun um, rationalize your answer. Okay. Any question for question two? Ini dia tengok ada berapa lagi. Oh, we are almost done. Okay, soalan yang ketiga, kita back to um, table. Uh, cuma sekarang ni, uh, tengok dekat sini, semua adalah unknown. 
Ha, maka kita tak tahu electronic configuration dah. Kita tak boleh tengok daripada electronic configuration. Memang kena interpret daripada um, table. So, table above show the data for five successive ionization energy. Dia bukan semua elektron eh. Mungkin dia akan ada 13 elektron. Tapi dia tunjuk lima yang pertama saja. Okay. So, for element X, where is the sudden increase? I4 to I5. Yang lain, agree tak? Agree. 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 Sebab Abi yang cakap, semua agree. <laughs> okay. So, kena praktis carikan uh, perbezaan dia ya. Antara IE1, IE2, eh, around 1000. Here around 2003. Uh, Here around 2000 or so. But from IE4 to IE5, okay, um, you have a great difference about 32,000. Ah, besar dia, dia punya um, um, perbezaan. Okay, lepas tu untuk elemen Y, where is the greatest differences? I4 to I5. I4 to I5. Still the same, right? From 4,000 and then straight away jump into 16,000. How about element Z? I2 to I3. I2, I3, agree? Yes. yes. Okay, perbezaan dia lebih kurang uh, 6,000. The rest of it here, 3,000, about 3,000, about 700. So, yang paling besar binya adalah kita binya sudden increase. Okay, so identify which two element belongs to the same group in the periodic table. Okay, um, kita uh, interpret dulu table ya. Yeah? Untuk elemen X ini ada berapa valence electron? If you are if you already figure out sudden increase, we need to know um, how many valence electron. Kalau untuk X ada berapa? Okay. Four. Four electron. So you need to go back to the explanations again. Untuk yang lain pun kena ikut Nathan sekali eh. Kalau untuk element X, between IE4, IE5, great difference. Your sudden increase. That means your fifth electron is coming from your inner shell. Kalau elektron kelima daripada inner shell, kat luar binya adalah awak punya valence electron. Alright, so over here, between the arrow, so if you focus on X ah. Huh, one, two, three, four. Therefore, over here, you have four valence electrons. Sama juga pada Y. Sebab sudden increase dia pun antara IE4 dengan IE5. Maka, uh, empat valence electron juga. Kalau untuk Z, berapa valence electron? Two. Two. Sebab kalau awak tengok Z, uh, IE3 ni maksudnya elektron ketiga daripada initial. Therefore, you only have two valence electron for our element Z. So, which element belongs to the same group? This one is quite straightforward, yeah? X and Y. Okay, X and Y. Predict the group of X in your periodic table. It is coming from group... Which group is 14? it? 14. 14, well done, because 4 valence electron. Sudden increase between IE4 I to IE5. Okay, between IE4 to IE5. Boleh guna short, shortcut IE eh. Uh, kalau tak selesa dengan shortcut, boleh tulis yang panjang. 4th valence, uh, sorry, 4th ISO, eh, ISO pula. 4th ionization energy to 5th ionization energy. Kalau nak yang panjang, pendek kena IE saja. IE4, IE5. Okay, so in this case, which electron is from your inner shell? 5th. 5th electron from the inner shell and they are 4 valence electron. Ini cara untuk awak explain position dan juga dia punya valence electron. Okay, mesti kena uh, ada keempat-empat point. Okay, then you fill in this, uh, yourself for part B. How about part C for the electronic 
balance electronic configuration. Kalau awak tulis semua electronic configuration maka salah eh. Dia minta valence sahaja. Okay. Do you know about the period? No. Don't know. Therefore we'll put an unknown. And. Ha, macam tadi Madam bagi tahu NS2, NP2. Ha, maka dekat sini kalau sudah tahu um, valence electron for Z is two valence electron. So. Uh, what should you write for valence electronic configuration? NS2. Yes, very good. NS2. Valence electron dua saja. Nah, maka dia jadi NS2. Kalau sudah tahu period, let's say dia datang daripada period 3. Uh, then we write 3S2. But if you don't know about period, it doesn't tell you about how many electron, how many proton, then we just write in unknown N. And S2. So how about the valence electronic configurations for Y? Anyone want to try? For valence electron? Okay, like MS9. Can I see where is Jamie? Nijami? Jamie Adeka? Sedap nama kan? Nijami? Nijami ada? Dia dah hilang dah. Dah hilang orangnya. Okay, never mind. Mariam ada tak Mariam? Last time Madam call you, 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 did, you are not here. Are you here now? Mariam. Tak ada juga ya. Yeah. MS8, Maisara ada, Maisara? Maisara, my my. Semua orang tak ada ni, kenapa ya? Dah bosan ikut kelas madam. Hmm. Is... Oh, yang ini Madam tak pernah panggil kan. Sakti eh. Sakti macam mana nak pronounce eh. Sakti ke Sakhi ke? MS9. Eh, hey, kelas. Tak ada orang. Saya je lah. Ah ya lah Ifa lah orang yang semua sama je yang 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 jawab. Ha meden nak nangis ah. Ha. Baik bagi Madam. Tapi saya tak tahu jawapan. Try lah eh, tak tahu. Hmm. <laughs> valence electronic configuration untuk Y kalau tak ke atas Madam sudah bagi tahu empat valence electron. So macam oh. mana kita nak keluarkan? Empat valence electron. Kalau ni Macam mana kita nak keluarkan? Macam mana nak tulis valence electronic configuration? Kalau sudah tahu empat valence electron? Uh, untuk Y yang ni? NS2? May I try to answer that? Madam sudah dengar jawapan dah. Uh, MS2 MP2 MP2 Yo, susahnya, yeah. susahnya. Aduh, Ifan. Ayo orang-orang yang Madam selalu panggil. Ayo. Please ah, Madam want you to be responsible for your own study. Ah uh, bukan uh, lupa hantar kerja, lepas lupa Madam kena cari seorang seorang-seorang baru bagi tahu Madam saya lupa ni, Madam saya tidur lah, Madam itulah, Madam tu. Study is yours. Okay. Nota sudah bagi. Guideline sudah bagi. Video pun macam-macam dekat YouTube. Kenapa boleh keluarkan alasan berbagai? Madam pun tak faham lah. Sakit hati tau tengok. Sampai UPS yang kira maka dekat final exam you pun macam hmm, tak kisah. Kalau tak kisah tak apa. Madam lagi lah tak kisah. 
Maka awak punya eh, please be responsible to your own study. So untuk assignment pun sama jugalah tak ada orang yang lambat hantar lepas lambat baru Madam saya tu lupa, Madam saya tak tahu ni, Madam saya tak tahu tu Dah bagi tiga minggu, saya tak nak dengar alasan-alasan yang Ha? Tiga minggu ke? Yalah, last week bagi sampai minggu sepuluh Oh saya ingat dua minggu tu sebab saya tukar selumus siap kan semalam <laughs> Sampai dua puluh lapan sekarang eh hari ni tiga belas kan eh Hari ni dua belas. Another sixteen more days. Another two weeks more lah. Okay. So last question over here. Explain why ionize, first ionization energy X is greater than Y. Ya, ini tambahan ya. Okay. Uh, first ionization X is greater than Y. So I'm using a different color. X and Y. So sebab kita sudah tahu dia datang daripada kumpulan yang sama. Group uh, 14. Okay. So, anyone want to tell me why? Oh, tak. Maybe tak boleh tanya macam ni. Tanya macam ni memang tak ada orang jawab. Okay. Kalau kita sudah tahu dia datang daripada kumpulan 14. Okay. If madam using size comparing with ionization energy, if Bigger size, what happens to the IE? Decreases. Decreases. Smaller. Become smaller, right? Bigger the size, smaller or lower the ionization energy. So let's just look at this. Group 14, growing down the group, the size increases. Okay, therefore ionization energy decreases going down the group. So dekat sini, X dengan Y. Um... Siapa duduk ke atas, siapa duduk ke bawah? X atas, Y bawah. X atas. Okay, contoh X is higher ni. than Y. X, Y. Macam ni? Uh, yes. Okay. Why do you uh, think that X is sitting at the top? Uh, by looking at the table, higher, we I. see that the energy required by X is higher than Y. Okay. So X. if the energy is uh, more, the more the energy, the lesser the size. And the smaller the size, yeah. Okay. So this one one zero eight six. Okay. This one seven eight six. Okay. I e for x. Okay. I e one for our x is higher. Therefore, the size is smaller. I e one for y is lower. Therefore, the size is bigger. For those who can't understand, you can draw out the diagram to interpret. Okay, so a general trend, we know going down the group, the size increases. Therefore, X is on the top of Y or, an, uh, or vice versa, Y is at the bottom of X. Okay, so kita tengok apa yang kita kena isi dalam jawapan. Greater ionizations of X indicate that X needs more. More. more energy to remove the first outermost electron. This show that X has smaller. Smaller. More energy. More. That means smaller size. Yeah. Very well done. Thank you. X has more shell or less shell? No. Less. Less shell or lesser shell. Compare lesser. This one's R. Huh? Okay. And it is located. Above. above, well done, above Y in the same group. Or you can say it's located on top of Y. Uh, boleh juga on top of Y in the same group. So as energy level increases, shielding effect increases. So shielding effect in X, we compare, shielding effect in X is more than or less than? Less than. Less than because it has less energy level. Okay, so shielding effect is lesser. Therefore, nucleus attraction, stronger or weaker? Stronger. Stronger. Okay, but this one is only comparing when you have elements, two or more, in the same group. Then only we can compare like this. Okay, so fill in the blank on your own. And this one as a guideline for you to answering your question in assignment. 
Of course lah Madam bagi peluang untuk awak tanya soalan ha, Bagi peluang untuk awak dapatkan full marks Madam bukan tak bagi peluang Madam bagi ha, Cuma Madam tak suka alasan lah ha. If wrong you admit you are wrong Don't give me reason yang mm, not very um, Madam pun tak seronok dengar alasan lah alasan macam tu lah ha. Bukan nak marah apa tapi sedih lah. Okay. Now we have around 10 more minutes. So here is the exercises for you uh, to practice. Um, Madam want you to inter... I think three questions should be fine. Tomorrow hol holidays, right? Yes. Ha? Holiday ka? Holiday ka? <laughs> holiday oh, ka? Yeah, holiday. Minggu ni ada dua oh, hari cuti lah. Ah. I don't know. I don't know tomorrow's <laughs> going to be a holiday. Monday and Thursday is holiday. Okay. Holiday, oh, holiday, also Thursday lah. Ah, you tak tahu lah. Wah, tahu. tu dia runtuh siya. Hmm? Oh, thank sebenarnya. God lah. Sebenarnya tak ada beza kan? You duduk di rumah juga kan? Uh. Eh, got time to to susun whatever the heck I'm doing okay. right now. So, Magda bagi tiga soalan ni ni. Satu isi tempat kosong. Dua lagi ni soalan dua dengan tiga. Uh, Magda nak awak buat jugalah. So tiga soalan ni ni hantar dekat GC. So since tomorrow is holiday, I should be able to finish by these three questions. Huh? Uh, kalau esok memang nak cuti, cuti penuh uh, buat hari ni. Okay, so three of these questions. Submit inside Google Classroom. Okay, Madam. I noted, Madam. Okay. Right, we conclude a little bit what we have talked about today. It's mainly about ionization energy. Uh, we talk about the definition, minimum energy required, blah, blah, blah. So this one is the general one. We got atom and ion. Okay, and then the first ionization energy generally increasing across the period because the size becomes smaller. Then IE decreases down the group because the size increases. So ionization energy always link back to the size. And then anomalous case in your first ionization energy, um, we have a group 2, group 13. Any one up? Okay, group 2, group 13 from period 2, we have beryllium boron. Okay, group 3 and uh, period 3, we have magnesium aluminium. So for both of these, we're comparing about the energy level between S and P subshell. Kalau beryllium boron, kita bandingkan 2S dengan 2P. Kalau magnesium aluminium, kita bandingkan 3S dengan 3P. Differences in um, energy level. And then another anomalous case, um, it happens at group 15 and 16. So period 2, we have nitrogen, oxygen. Period 3, we have phosphorus, sulfur. So between group 15, group 16, we talk about, uh, what do we talk about? Uh, we talk about the stability. Uh, so this one, we talk about the stability of the half fill or partially fill P orbital. Okay, yang tadi ni kita cakap pasal energy difference ah, Energy difference. Okay, so another subtopic that we have mentioned today is successive ionization energy. So interpret the data from the table, um, especially the table lah. And then the graph is the add-on point for you. Okay, and then from the data itself, it can tell you about where is it the sudden increase between which energy level with which energy level, and then how many valence electrons are there, um, and then it is from which group, so mainly from S and also P block element. Group 1, group 2, 13 until 17, 18, we are not talking about it. Okay, and then valence electronic configuration and the position. The position is similar like uh, the, the block, the period, and so on. So that's all for today. Any questions you would like to ask? Ada soalan nak tanya?
Uh, madam. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean by gaseous atom or gaseous ion? Which one? Uh, I think at the beginning of the class. Uh, if... The ionization energy. One mole of gaseous atom or gaseous ion. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. What What does it mean by gaseous? Uh, that means the element is in term of gas phase. For example, uh, carbon is in solid, isn't it? Sodium yeah, is in solid, but now we want in gaseous phase. So it's not, not much difference. You just remember if we want to mention about uh, magnesium. So just now we talk about magnesium. It's this phase only. So gaseous yeah. magnesium atom. Okay, Mg plus, and then this one is gaseous magnesium ion. Um, Just the phase only. Okay, okay. Okay? Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. That do, you fine. Uh, gonna study, yeah? Okay, so for the attendance for today, actually, Madam got a uh, quizy, but not enough time. So, untuk yang ini, Madam akan bagi secara homework boleh, ya? Lima soalan senang je. Okay, senang je. Madam bagi Baik. sampai... Petang ni sebelum pukul 6 eh. Baik. Boleh. Alright, noted. Uh, boleh, Madam. Boleh. Okay. Dalam Google Class jugalah nanti Madam assign. Oh, boleh jawab, ya. Yeah. Boleh. So that's all for today. Thank you.